All right, it is 8 p.m. Sunday night, and it's time for another fabulous Sunday night news and nonsense. And like crack for the crack addict, we've got Toss addicted to Manjaro. You are addicted to Manjaro, aren't you, Toss? I am. <laughs> Oh, or is guess, that guess... or is that fire extinguish your fumes? <laughs> <laughs> well, it did say this can be potentially dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, uh, how is that working out for you? And what did you build for us from the AUR? Well, as you know, I've been testing it both in VBox and in a full install. I've installed Caden Live and Kazam, um, among some other things. The system, real quick, it's zippy, it's fast. I like that part. It's been little annoyances here and there, but other than that, it's been really nice. You know, the one thing that um, I love about Manjaro is the AUR. I just can't live without it. Toss, I love having, you know, what can I say? I'm a sucker for good software, especially good software that has the latest features. And I like the fact that, for instance, well, I use Caden Live, and I built the version from Git because it has all of the latest and greatest features. And uh, to be honest with you, I love it a lot more than the stable version that they have in the repositories. And not only did I get the Caden Live, but I also got the freer plugins and um, the MLT framework for it. I built them all, all three of them together. And um, and it's really cool because you can pretty much find just about everything under the sun uh, out of the uh, AUR. And that's what I was hoping that you were going to have a look at that. And so, so tell us, um, how, how, what was your experience like with the AUR? Did you think it was too confusing? Did you feel it was something uh, that maybe, you know, um, would be too difficult for some people? What's your impressions of that overall? Well, you have to, to, to enable it because it's not enabled by default. So you need to click that one of those tabs, you know, slide the thing, you know, slide the little thingy to the right and it turns it on and then you go back and search what you know what you want to search for. But no, it's, 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 it's not that difficult at all. Uh, there's a few extra steps that might be a little bit intimidating for a newbie, but I will not say it's, it's hard. I try to install everything without the AUR by the default, uh, what is it, the Pac-Man uh, software repository because it, uh, supposedly that is the most stable way to install software. But using the AUR, a few extra steps, it might scare away some newbies, but is it really that difficult? I don't think so. Okay, interesting enough indeed. Okay, well, you'll remember, guys, uh, in a previous show, we were talking about how SourceForge, you know, has been injecting all this malware and that sort of thing into some of the projects. And it turns out that SourceForge has been taken over by a new ownership because we did have a follow-up story, uh, and I just posted that text information on my YouTube channel. But it appears that SourceForge now is scanning all projects for malware and displays warnings on downloads. So they have a, you know, they've partnered with Bitdefender, and uh, so they're they're trying to bring SourceForge back to its original glory days. These new owners that have taken it over. So this is fantastic news because some of you guys will remember I expressed a little bit of concern because you know. Um, Manjaro Cup of Linux edition is being served up from SourceForge. But the reality of it is, though, they've never given me any reason to question their handling of my ISO images until we got news that they were, you know, injecting this malware into mostly Windows software and programs. So uh, I think once the community got wind of all of this, somebody stepped up to the plate and said, no, 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 we can't have this going, and uh, and they're bringing SourceForge back. So that's good news indeed. What do you think about that, Toss? I think that sounds very user-friendly, absolutely. What you got? Well, guess what outsold Apple desktops and laptops in the last quarter combined? That wouldn't be the Chromebook by chance, would it? Exactly. Go on, tell us about it. Well, uh, apparently uh, the Chromebooks, they, they've always been popular because they're easy to use, lightweight, and, and I guess one of the main factors is they're, they're inexpensive, inexpensive, and they're, I, guess, I guess there is strong demand 
by school by schools K through 12 because they are inexpensive. Uh, of course, they want they run web-based applications, but they're easy to use. They're less prone to malware. Uh, of course, they use Chrome OS by Google, so it is something that's reliable. From what I understand, I don't personally have one, but listen, isn't Chrome OS a form of Linux? So I think that's terrific news. I, I believe so, and if I'm not mistaken, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong on this, I do believe um, it is a variant of Gen 2 that it yes. was built on top of. I could be wrong, but you know, it's really funny because um, I have a story that's related to yours um, that I'm going to share here. Uh, and w when you had mentioned what outsold uh, Mac, I couldn't believe this because uh, I was reading this article. Apparently, Android apps run securely on Chrome OS in Linux containers now. Yeah. And uh, at the beginning of the article, they stated that the first quarter shipments of the Chromebooks exceeded Macs in the United States. So they are getting very, very popular. And uh, Chromebooks just got a little bit more complicated, but for the better with Google's announcement that the Android Play Store will be available on Chromebooks and that Android apps will run on the Chrome operating system. And, you know, they have lots of applications from Adobe Photoshop, Microsoft Word, Skype, and a bunch of other things. This is going to bring... Um, a whole new world of applications over to the uh, Chrome OS platform. So that's good yeah. news for them indeed, I suppose. I completely agree, yeah. All right, well, yeah. what you got? <laughs> well, it looks like uh, the latest Cinnamon desktop, uh, what is it, 3.03, is now av available for Linux Mint users. Um, it looks like that the Cinnamon desktop Spatchy will be the default desktop for the next Linux Mint 18. I've played with Cinnamon before, it's okay. Personally, I'm a Mate kind of guy, but uh, really just about anything Linux Mint does is probably still still going to be user-friendly, so yeah. And uh, I, I haven't had an opportunity to really look at Cinnamon in quite a long time, but I will be honest in that I, I did try my best to give it a fair shake. Um, it's beautiful. It functions. It has that air of familiarity. But my problem with it is, well, Tosh, you know how I like to pull all the knobs and, you know, twist the dials and that sort of thing. Yes. And uh, Chrome tended to crash. Well, I mean, not, not Chrome. I mean, Cinnamon tended to crash on me. Some of the applets and that sort yes. of thing would tend to break. Yes. And I haven't had a chance to look at it recently. And I'm sure they've made a lot of improvements and stuff to it. Um, one of these days, I think I'm going to download it uh, on my Manjaro setup and uh, take another look at Cinnamon um, because uh, it does look like it's really neat what they've done with it. And, uh, you know, they're always bringing new uh, plugins for it and stuff. So uh, I'd be very interested in seeing how it has changed. It's been like a year and a half, two years since I've looked at it. Yes. So it's probably about time that I get a fresh perspective on that. Sure. Well, Guess what, Toss? If you don't like Windows 10, Microsoft has just made it easy for anyone to complain. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yes, uh, uh, apparently Windows 10 users can now download the Feedback Hub app from Microsoft Store on both the desktop and phone version of the OS. And the app was previously available to Windows Insiders. Feedback is the whole point of the beta test, blah, blah, blah. So at any rate, they have a platform now for uh, anyone to complain. Now, will they actually read these complaints? <laughs> They'll probably hire the official complaint reader, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe they need to pull out the fire extinguisher like you did for oh, that. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I still, uh, uh, I'm still going to get you for that one, Toss. <laughs> I could resist. <laughs> what you got? Oh, I'm ready for nonsense. That's all I have left. Are you ready? Uh, well, uh, let me see here. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go on with your nonsense. All right. Well, we uh, we somewhat joked about you know watches, smart watches in the past. Well, get ready, I guess, for a smart toothbrush. <laughs> 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 
A a Seattle company is launching a high tech toothbrush. This is for real. These are all real news that lets users stream video from inside their mouths. What? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's going to go over like a lead balloon at a five-year-old birthday party, streaming video from the mouth. That's, uh, I don't I, know. That that sounds kind of vulgar, Toss. What kind of videos would you play in your mouth today? <laughs> personally, personally, I think it's ridiculous. I guess it uses Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I guess it gives a new meaning to the term wet video. This is what your teeth will look like if you don't brush. <laughs> exactly. Oh goodness. Okay, this is this is kind of like nonsense news, but uh, apparently this is this is true. There is a new tool that promises to help you to create your own Arch Linux package repository, and it's called Arch PPA. And they were discussing this the other day on the uh, Manjaro forum, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 please don't Ubuntu eyes Manjaro or uh, Arch Linux with uh, by adding PPAs, but apparently this is true. Uh, Arch PPA developer Ryan McGuire says that he created this utility to help the Arch Linux personal package ecosystem to be more secure than it is right now via the AUR Arch user repository and officially recognized software repositories where anyone with proper skills can upload new software and maintain it. And as such, AUR comes with uh, a big warning to those attempting to install any of the packages maintained. Uh, and that's, of course, where you pulled out your fire extinguisher. <laughs> and that sort of thing, right? <laughs> but the reality of it is, folks, if you're smart and you scroll up, you'll see any comments that people left about the packages. And before you install Install. It asks you if you want to read the package build. The wise thing to do is to say, yes, I do want to read the package build, see where these files are being downloaded from. You know, uh, it stands to reason if you're going to be building a package, you know, if you're going to be, for instance, building Caden Live from the AUR, you want to make sure that the package that it's downloading is actually coming from the Caden Live repository or website or something like that and not from you know joe blow troll.com who's gonna you know put an rm slash f on your hard drive or something like that really yes rm i'm assuming that means remove right? <laughs> yeah okay let's see what do i have oh woman says music video inspired her to torch heating x's new car what I guess, I, I guess, I guess this girlfriend uh, was not treated uh, kindly by her boyfriend, and there is a picture video of a new Chevrolet Malibu burning after being set aflame by the spurned ex-girlfriend. Well, you know, it's it's only a Chevy. Would have been it would have been a tragedy if it was a Lexus. Well, so, yeah. well actually, we we had something worse than that happen here in South Florida. Oh. Uh, a good 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, Lorena Bobbitt, you know, um, I'm sure uh, you've heard about that yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's not go I mean, there. there are worse, there are worse, yeah. worse consequences than having your car burned. Let's move on. <laughs> Bring it on, Toss. Well, uh, this is really not cool, but still funny. Police say four firefighters called in false alarms. You want to know why? Why? Just to ride in the fire truck. Okay. I guess they got their jollies by riding, yeah. Oh, oh wait, sorry. wait, 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 wait. I guess <laughs> they were on fire trucks, and I guess now they will be, they will be fired. Okay, well, I was on motherboard.vice.com today, and uh, I saw this article that I... I that, that I thought was kind of like nonsense, but it's true because it's possible that some pe you know, that some people, that one person in particular here was able to install uh, Arch Linux on his PS4 and then be able to uh, run Steam. So basically, he, 
so basically he's converted his PS4 into like a Steam box, but instead of using um, instead of using the Debian based Steam OS, he was actually able to run Arch Linux and then uh, be able to run the Steam software in big picture mode. And there's this video on YouTube uh, from Osiris X. Uh, demonstrating how to do this and I, I thought it was kind of funny because you know um, what if we see a lot more of this happening in the near future where people like you are taking you know taking your Xboxes and just wiping the hard drives and installing any old Linux distro on them and then using you know th this this could be a great marketing scheme for um, Valve you know <laughs> <laughs> yes, let me just erase all my games. Yes, uh, that'll make me happy. Yes. Could you imagine if Valve were to release like a uh, like a uh, you know a, a patch for your Xbox One or your PS your PS4 that will convert them into a Steam machine? <laughs> I'm sure that'll leave a lot of Xbox owners steamed. Oh, I'm sh I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm sure that uh. <laughs> I'm sure there would be serious lawsuits heading uh, towards Valve big time. But what's to stop the community from making these quote-unquote patches? Say goodbye to Halo Toss. We're going to convert <laughs> your <laughs> we're going to convert your Xbox into a Steam machine. <laughs> Don't get me steamed. <laughs> but think about it. You know, if you got one. You got one person on YouTube here who's, you know, converting their game consoles. I mean, this could really affect the face of uh, console gaming as we know it. You've got these competing companies coming out, you know. And, okay, so it's not Valve who released the uh, patch, but Joe Schmo Troll decided to put this uh, patch out, you know. Who just so happens to be on the Valve payroll, maybe. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. I, I know, I know, I know. It, it's kind of nonsensy, but I, I thought that was kind of cool to bring that up because that could actually change the face of gaming if you've got all these compete, competing game companies and it's like, oh, we got a patch that we can apply to your PS4 that'll turn it into a Steam machine. Holy moly. <laughs> All I can say is game on, right? Game on. You got it. You got anything else, Toss? Yeah, actually, uh, more car recall, Spatcher. You won't believe this. Apparently, uh, some certain manufacturers domestically, they're recalling hundreds of thousands of cars because of all things confusing shifters. Automatic shifting. Apparently, You're joking, right? No, I... I swear, I, I kid you not, all the news I pick is real. I cannot make this stuff up, man. But apparently some of these cars, the shifter is software-based. And there's a picture here in one of these cars. The, you know, the, the, the PVR, the park reverse neutral drive, is on the shifter and not on the base of the shifter itself, where it should be. So apparently there were people who thought they parked their car, put it in park, and I guess the car rolled. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, oh, 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 I get it, I get it. So P is for pathetic, N is for nincompoop, and D, uh, <laughs> D is for dummies who designed this. You know what, Toss? I think they're making, you know, technology is just too convenient for people nowadays. I think we need to go back to the old days where all vehicles had stick shifts in them. And if you don't know how to operate a vehicle, man, you know, uh, really because uh, I mean a stick shift you I feel like you're you, you feel like you're in control of the vehicle anyway you know why why wear down them brake pads when you can just downshift and save those you know use the engine to yeah. slow down you know but yeah don't don't wear the brakes I mean just wear down the clutch hey oh. <laughs> darned if you do darned if you don't duh <laughs> Yep. Get off of my mumble toss. Say goodbye, Spatry. <laughs> no, Not you yet. say goodbye. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us for another Sinner Report, the Sunday night snooze and nonsense, according to Spatry. We'll catch you here next Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. I will say goodnight to everybody. Good night. Good night, 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 night. And don't quit your day job. I don't want to hear you singing. 
Oh, look who's talking NSA, NSA, everybody loves you. No, no NSA news. That was last season. Goodbye. Goodbye.